In this video, we are going to discuss the electron transport chain. The basic concept behind this series of reactions is that a group of proteins are transferring hydrogen protons across the membrane to create a gradient. A gradient can be visualized as more pressure on one side than the other for any particular atom, but in this case, it's hydrogen protons. Then, another protein uses the potential energy of this gradient to power itself and make ATP from ADP. Within this model, the solid blue line represents the inner membrane within a mitochondrion. The space below the line represents the mitochondrial matrix. The space above it represents the intermembrane space of the mitochondrion. The group of blue shapes represent the proteins along this membrane that transport the hydrogen protons into the intermembrane space. The orange cylinder represents the ATP synthase protein that is responsible for making the large amounts of ATP that we've been talking about in previous videos. For ATP synthase, along this membrane there are fewer of this protein. And because this is the only way that hydrogens are released out from the membrane space back into the mitochondrial matrix, this limits the number of hydrogens that are released, which contributes to the strong gradient. The back pressure of the hydrogen gradient is what powers ATP synthase to create the large amount of ATP. Each proton that passes through ATP synthase creates one molecule of ATP. The group of blue complexes within the model use the power of the proton carriers, NADH and FADH2, to transport the protons back into the intermembrane space in order to create the gradient. Therefore, it has been found that there are more of these groups of complexes than there are ATP synthase proteins. Also, one pass through this chain covers only one carrier's contribution. This multiplies the number of hydrogen protons that pass through even more. Now, we will go through each of these proteins one by one to explain which carrier contributes and where. Complex 1 uses NADH to transport the protons up. This converts the NADH back into NAD, where it can be used again by glycolysis and the Krebs cycle to carry another hydrogen. When complex 1 carries the hydrogen, it splits the proton from the electron and sends the proton past through the membrane and the electron to coenzyme Q. Complex 2 takes FADH and breaks off its hydrogen molecules to use its electrons to send them to coenzyme Q. The protons stay in the mitochondrial matrix to be transferred through the membrane, usually through complex 3. When coenzyme Q receives an electron from complex 1 or complex 2, it sends it on to complex 3. Complex 3 then uses the energy from each electron that it receives from coenzyme Q to transfer protons into the intermembrane space. Then it sends that electron through to cytochrome C. Cytochrome C transfers the electrons to complex 4, which sends the electrons out back into the mitochondrial matrix, where they are added to two hydrogen protons and half an O2 molecule to make one molecule of water. Complex 4 also uses this energy to transfer another proton into the intermembrane space. The total production of ATP and the total transfer of hydrogen protons cannot be precisely counted when taking into account the numerous NADH molecules and FADH2 molecules and the hydrogen protons that are made by glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. Even though there is a specific amount of these molecules made that we can account for each glucose molecule, there is still continuing research to decide how many protons are precisely transferred through each complex for each of the proton carriers. The estimated number is 32, which is the number we will go with. And so assuming that 32 protons get transferred up into the intermembrane space, that means that 32 protons will transfer back through the ATP synthase, creating 32 molecules of ATP. The things you will be expected to know from this video are how many estimated ATP are produced by the ETC from one glucose molecule, the names of the two sides of the inner membrane, and which side is the gradient or pressure created, which protein complex is associated with which proton carrier, and where certain reactions occur on this diagram.